Mikhail Baryshnikov is one of the few ballet dancers that has widespread recognition outside of the dance world. In addition to his jaw-dropping technical abilities, his acting in four movies and one cable series from the 1970s through the early 2000s served as an important artistic vehicle to expand his reach into popular culture to non-ballet fans. This video is the first in a series on Baryshnikov in the movies. This video covers his work in The Turning Point, a movie in which he portrayed a character not far from his own reality as a dance superstar, Soviet defector. In his first film, he commanded attention with his dynamic presence in Gravitas. So grab some popcorn, turn out the lights, and enjoy the show. It's really nothing special. And what do you think? I can't imagine. A brief background on Baryshnikov and his dramatic talents on the stage before getting to the turning point. Seeking artistic freedom and the opportunity to work with more diverse choreographers, Mikhail Baryshnikov defected from the Soviet Union while the Bolshoi Ballet was on tour in Toronto in 1974 when he was 26 years of age. Baryshnikov's defection was big news and he enjoyed a high public profile, including the covers of Time and Newsweek magazines in 1975 when those publications were important news outlets. Solidifying his place in popular culture was the 1977 movie, The Turning Point. Baryshnikov was known for his great athleticism, with high creative leaps and powerful turns. His athletic prowess overshadowed another strength in his arsenal, which was his dramatic side that foreshadowed a successful series of four movies and one cable series. As American Ballet Theater artistic director Kevin McKenzie, who danced with him in the 1970s and 80s at ABT, says, Brishnikov could simply stand on stage and attract attention with his dramatic timing and gravitas. Impressive as he was not physically imposing at only 5 foot 6 inches tall. People used to say, you know, Misha, he's so fabulous because he can do that triple what you call it to the knee. There isn't even a name to it. And it's like, well, no, he's not fabulous because of that. He's fabulous because he can stand on stage and do nothing and you can't take your eye off it. Here are two of my favorite ballet clips emphasizing his dramaticism. First is Baryshnikov in Vestris, a seven-minute solo filled with expressive mime created for him by Leonid Jakobsen for the 1969 Moscow International Ballet Competition. The solo is based on Augusta Vestris, a French dancer in the 1700s. The first episode represents an old man dancing the minuet. Second is Brezhnikov in 1977 in Giselle at the Metropolitan Opera House with Natalia Makarova. As Albrecht, he is overcome by grief after the young Giselle returns to her grave to rest in peace. Back to the turning point. Herbert Ross directed the movie. Ross started out as a dancer choreographer, particularly on Broadway. He made his directorial debut in 1969 with Goodbye Mr. Chips, with prominent movies including The Sunshine Boys, Funny Lady, The Goodbye Girl, Footloose, Steel Magnolias. Ross passed away in 2001. The turning point loosely follows the lives of Isabel Merrow Brown and Nora Kay, who was married to Ross from 1959 until her passing in 1987. Isabel and Nora were childhood friends growing up in the same brownstone building in New York City. Nora was a dancer at Ballet Theater, now American Ballet Theater, from its inception in 1939 until 1952. Isabel was a dancer there from 1947 until 1953. Isabel married dancer Kelly Brown, stopped performing, and had four children, while Nora continued to dance and was a notable figure in the ballet world. In 1965, Kelly and Isabel moved to Phoenix to run a dance studio. Isabel was not happy about leaving New York and returned when their teenage daughter, Leslie Brown, was accepted at the New York City Ballet's School of American Ballet. In the mid-1970s, family friend Arthur Laurence read a script based on the Brown family and shared it with friend Herbert Ross. Your mother preferred to get married. The Turning Point is a fictionalized account of Nora and Isabel's relationship. In the movie, Dee Dee Rogers, based on Isabel Merrill Brown, played by Shirley MacLaine, leaves the ballet company after becoming pregnant by Wayne 
based on Kelly Brown, played by Tom Skerritt, may marry and move to Oklahoma to set up a dance studio. Her friend Emma Jacklin, based on Nora Kay, played by Anne Bancroft, continues her career becoming a ballet star. The two meet up on a company tour stop in Oklahoma. At a cast party at the Rogers house, the two reminisce, with Dee Dee wondering what might have been if she had remained with the company. Dee Dee creates tension as she retells the story of when they were young dancers in competition for a role in a major ballet. The role went to Emma as Dee Dee dropped from contention when she became pregnant and left the company. Want to change places? You don't remember when Michael was choreographing Anna Karenina? Yes, of course I do. And who was he rehearsing for the part of Anna? You and me. And? And? You got pregnant. Yeah. And you got 19 curtain calls. Oh, Dee Dee. The movie features great star power with Bancroft and McLean. Bancroft, who passed away in 2005, is one of only 24 actors to achieve the triple crown of acting, taking home Academy, Emmy, and Tony Awards in the Best Acting category. Her best-known role was as Mrs. Robinson in the evocative 1967 The Graduate, as an unhappy married woman who seduces the son of her husband's business partner. In several interviews, she said the role overshadowed her other work. Here is a classic clip in which she toys with 21-year-old Benjamin Braddock, played by Dustin Hoffman. Interesting that despite her role as the older woman, she was at age 35 only six years older than Hoffman. Bancroft was not a dancer and made brief appearances during turning point dancing scenes. Although Shirley MacLaine was a former Broadway dancer, she had no dancing scenes in the movie. MacLean, whose career spanned seven decades, won numerous awards, including an Academy Award and six Golden Globes. She was the real deal as a Broadway dancer. Here's a clip with Gene Kelly in the 1964 movie, What a Way to Go. Tom Skerritt plays Wayne, Dee Dee's husband, a passing figure in an underdeveloped role. In his career, his most prominent role was as Mike Viper Metcalf, Maverick's commanding officer in the 1986 Top Gun. simple fact is you feel responsible for Goose and you have a confidence problem. There, we gotta push it. That's our job. Back to the turning point. Dee Dee's daughter, Amelia, is invited to take class with the company and she is invited to join the company. Dee Dee and Amelia decide to go to New York together. Amelia is played by 20-year-old Leslie Brown, the real-life daughter of Kelly and Isabel. Oddly, Amelia is basically a fictionalized version of herself. A major fictionalized subplot of the film is the relationship between Amelia and Yuri, played by Baryshnikov. Yuri is a Soviet defector ballet superstar, Babe Magnet. It was probably easy for the 29-year-old Baryshnikov to play the role because he was a Soviet defector, ballet superstar, babe magnet. Yuri, always on the lookout for young, beautiful women, notices Amelia in rehearsal, and soon after, they start a relationship, represented by the Romeo and Juliet balcony scene, pas de deux, set to Prokofiev's score. Then on to Yuri's bedroom. The two have a great time as young lovers in New York City, but tensions mount when Yuri strays, pursuing another dancer, Caroline, played by Joffrey Ballet's Star Denias. You're so fabulous. You know, sometimes better not to talk. I agree, and particularly with me, because... Caroline. Yes? Over the course of the film, tensions mount between Dee Dee and Emma. Dee Dee resents that Emma has gone on to ballet stardom while she raised a family. Dee Dee accuses Emma of suggesting that she choose family over ballet so Emma could get the lead role in Anna Karenina. Dee Dee also resents Emma's guidance and nurturing of Amelia, inserting a wedge between mother and daughter. Emma and Dee Dee have a big fight starting at a bar, continuing outside on the Windy Theater Plaza as they air out their long-standing grievances. Amelia and Yuri concentrate on their onstage relationship, ending in an acrobatic Don Quixote Grand Pas de Deux. 
The movie features great dancing from Brishnikov and other 1970s stars, such as Suzanne Farrell, Peter Martins, Antoinette Sibley, Fernando Bajonis. Ross does a stellar job of showing off the dancing with unique but not overbearing camera angles. See my previous videos on Brishnikov's breathtaking dancing in the movie. The Turning Point is one of my favorite movies. The main theme is the choices one makes in life and resulting consequences. Turning points in life. Dee Dee chose love while Emma chose to continue dancing, achieving success and stardom. While both are successful in their lives, they envy each other. Dee Dee longs for the spotlight and what might have been. Emma, while achieving fame, is coming to terms with her fading career with nobody to share it with. She has a long-term relationship with a married, stuffy, Wall Street-type lawyer that is going nowhere. She looks up to Dee Dee with a stable family structure with a supporting husband and three great kids as she approaches the next phase of her uncertain life after the stage. The movie's central theme is that as much as we try, we can't have everything in life. Although the evolving relationship of lead characters Dee Dee and Emma is the main course of the movie plot, the travails of Amelia and Yuri serve as an appetizing side dish. Brishnikov almost steals the movie in multiple scenes with his dynamic presence as the playful Russian with two passions, dancing and beautiful young women. You know, I think it's perfectly all right to be nervous. Really? Really, I know. Dance well. Brishnikov excelled in his first movie role, probably because Yuri was not far from his personal story as a high-profile Soviet defector. You make too much from Carlin and me. But I apologize anyway. Keep doing. Come, 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 come. The Turning Point received generally favorable reviews from major publications. Vincent Canby of the New York Times wrote, The Turning Point is entertaining, not for discovering new material, but for treating old material with style and romantic feeling. Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune gave it three and a half out of four stars, writing that it is refreshing to see a film that has a story you can't easily anticipate. Charles Champlin of the Los Angeles Times lauds the performances of Bancroft and McLean and calls the movie handsome, stylish entertainment. The Rotten Tomatoes Tomato Meter, a survey of movie reviewers, is 63%, with an audience score of 67%. User ratings from imdb.com are 6.9 out of 10. Females like the movie more than males, with a 7.4 score, probably due to females embracing ballet more than males, and of course, Brishnikov. The Turning Point earned 11 Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress, with Brishnikov nominated in the Best Supporting Actor category. However, the movie has the dubious distinction with one other film of having the most Oscar nominations without winning any. The Turning Point did win two Golden Globe Awards for Best Motion Picture Drama and Best Director. A trivia question, what other movie had 11 Academy Award nominations without taking home any Oscars? Answer, Steven Spielberg's 1985 The Color Purple. The Turning Point was a commercial success. According to the numbers.com, domestic box office revenue was about $34 million, which is $138 million inflation adjusted. The Turning Point is definitely a movie worth checking out, particularly for ballet fans, with substantial performance footage and behind the scenes action in ballet class. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, the movie is not available for streaming, only available on DVD. Given the importance of the movie and substantial critical acclaim, it is a shame it is not widely available. What is your favorite Brishnikov movie? Favorite scenes? Memorable moments? Would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Stay tuned for part two on Brishnikov and the movies, focusing on his work in White Nights with Gregory Hines. Thanks for tuning in. Turn it off.